Hi, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. And today what I wanna do is I wanna help you a little bit in getting yourself organized on some things that might be really good for you to practice on a daily basis. Now, what happens a lot with people is they start learning a lot of stuff. You know, they're getting uh, videos and magazines and all these different things and they're practicing all these different licks and scales and theory. And what gets lost in the whole mix is having some fun learning songs. I'm a huge, huge advocate for learning songs. Um, people like me, when we first started learning how to play guitar, and you might be the same way, you know, I didn't start off by learning how to play, you know, modes and all these different things. I started off learning how to play songs because I was a huge fan of Kiss and Aerosmith and The Beatles and Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and all these other bands when I first started playing. Um, and, you know, and then it went into Ozzy and Metallica and things like that. And so for me, it was always incredibly inspiring to learn how to play songs by artists that I like to listen to. And even today, as long as I've been playing, it still is. And I think what happens a lot is we get so consumed with things we need to practice that we forget that we're supposed to be actually having some fun with some of these elements as well. So what I want to talk to you about today um, is what I refer to as ego songs and project songs, okay? At any point in your life, you should be practicing material by somebody else. Okay? It's really important because your influences are going to be stemmed from these people that you're learning from. You know, if you're a big Led Zeppelin fan and you learn how to play Whole Lot of Love or you uh, learn how to play Going to California or something like that, there's elements in there that you probably never would have thought of on your own and certainly wouldn't have thought of all of those things all at the same time that, that kind of make up that song. So songs themselves lend themselves to us seeing new things and hearing new things and experiencing new things with our fingers, patterns and ideas and licks and phrases and riffs and all sorts of different stuff. Um, so on the, the most obvious level, songs make us excited. They engage us. They make us want to practice. Okay. On a deeper level, they offer us material that we can use to better ourselves, whether it be on a core level of speed or some sort of technique that we're doing. Um, on a creative level, we might use some elements from here and there in our solos or in our songwriting or whatever it might be. Um, so it's kind of up to you to decide what you want to do with it. But the main thing is, is you'd never experience any of those things if you weren't learning some songs on a regular basis. So what I've done is I've devised, I did this a long time ago when I first started learning how to, or first started teaching, was I, I started thinking about songs and how so many of my students would hit a brick wall because they'd be trying to learn some song and they'd get frustrated. And, um, you know, they're like, man, I suck because I can't play songs. I, I, you know, every time I try and play a song, I can't get through the whole thing. And that's when I started thinking, well, maybe what we need to do is we need to reassess the songs that we're learning. So what I came up with is this sort of two-part plan, which is ego, E-G-O songs, ego songs, and project songs. So we're not just summarizing all music into songs and then we either can play them and we're successful or we can't and we're not successful. Ego songs are songs that we can play with a limited amount of time spent and a limited amount of effort spent. They're meant to make us feel good, okay? We might not learn them all the way through. We might not learn all the parts. We might not learn the solos. We might not learn everything exactly the same, exactly the way it's supposed to be. But we don't care because we're having fun, it's an, it's it's encouraging and it's building confidence and it's exciting for us because it's music that we enjoy. That's what an ego song is. So let's say you, in, and this is kind of where it starts breaking down a little bit, is understanding, well, how do I find an ego song? Okay, well, let's think about a technique that you're interested in trying to work on. Let's, let's say you're trying to strum open chords. So you're working on your strumming or you're working on your chords or whatever it might be. So the best thing to do would be to probably choose a song that's at a bit slower tempo if you're trying to move chords, or it might be something that the strum of the song kind of fits with where you are in your playing, okay? So you start finding a balance between songs you like, but songs that are serving a purpose, not just songs that you like, and don't get me wrong, it's okay to do that too. But let's just take this a little bit deeper. So we're picking a song that we like, but we're also picking that song because it's serving some sort of purpose. It's, it's working on these chords that we need work on, but it is at a slower tempo so we can attack it. 
um, or it's working on a certain kind of strumming pattern or finger picking pattern or palm muting technique that we're working on, or it's a riff like a, an Iron Maiden thing or a Judas Priest thing where it's got some sort of little scale thing in it, but it's not way too fast. Okay. So it's really working on us in two ways. It's serving a purpose on a technical level, some sort of ability level, but it's also fun for us to play and it doesn't require an astronomical amount of our time. Okay, that's what an ego song is. A project song, on the other hand, is a song that requires a lot of time and a lot of effort, and we may never get through the whole song, or at least on this time around, maybe a year from now or six months or five years from now, we're in a different place, but right now that song is really kind of out of our, out of our hands. And if you can kind of relate to what I'm saying, let's say you choose a song that you really, really like, and you start playing it and you're doing great and it's all going good, but then you get to like measure seven in the song or measure 15 or whatever it is. And the song does something crazy. You know, like I always think of like Metallica or Avenged Sevenfold or whoever it might be, where all of a sudden there'll be some part in there where you just go, wow, I, I can't do that. That's, I'm not ready for that. Okay, well now that song has become a project song because it's gonna require much more time and much more effort on a small thing, not just the entire song, but some element of that song has got you at a roadblock, you see? Now, it is possible that we could avoid that and just pretend like, you know, we just don't play it or whatever and kind of move it over into an ego song. But I really think of these things as being two different elements. For instance, an ego song might be uh, strumming an eagle song or strumming a Beatles song or finger picking a James Taylor song or um, if you're into metal, you're palm muting a static X tune that doesn't have a lot of parts. Where a project song might be something that you're doing by Al Di Miola or something that you're doing by Dream Theater. And again, this is just a big, huge, broad range. I'm just trying to explain to you kind of how you'd see this. And the trick to this is, is figuring out where you belong in the ego and the project song uh, formula. Because if you have to kind of understand where you are on your path, right? what kinds of things are you good at? Okay, and yes, you are good at a bunch of things. You just have to look at yourself and go, okay, yeah, I am good at these chords, or I can play power chords, or I can palm mute, or you know, I can play a scale really fast, or whatever it might be. And so the more you start thinking about your abilities and the more you start thinking about how you can kind of fill space with ego songs and project songs. Now, here's the trick. Try and have somewhere around a three to one ratio, three ego songs to one project song. So every day you're practicing three ego songs. They might be the same songs. You might throw one out and get a different one. You know, six months from now, you've got 30 songs in a playlist on Spotify or something that you can play to warm up to and it makes you feel good. And you know, you're playing a Lenny Kravitz tune because it, it's pretty easy for you, but yet it's really fun to play or a Stevie Wonder tune or you know, what a BB King tune, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. But the, this, this ego song list just keeps expanding and all of a sudden you have all these different songs that you can play, whether you're jamming with other people or just playing uh, music by yourself or you're gonna go to a, a, you know, a jam at a club or something and you're gonna play, now you've got all these songs that you know you can do. Maybe you don't have everything perfect, but you have it enough to where it's functional, okay? The project side is gonna be far slower and you're going to throw out a lot more material and you can't feel bad about that because these are learning experiences okay you can't just decide you're going to learn classical gas and then you know you start playing it and it's way above your head and like you're now you think that you're not a good player because you can't play classical gas there's a million people that can't play classical gas okay but who knows you might come back to classical gas a year from now and go wow this really isn't as hard as i thought it was going to be you know, a year ago when I first started learning how to play this because you as a player are on a different level, okay? So that's ego songs versus project songs. And just to kind of summarize, and then I'm gonna let you go so I don't bore you here. Um, what I find with a lot of my overachieving students, and I get it because that was very much me too, but we tend to make, ego songs aren't good enough. You know, we always have to have something that's incredibly ridiculously challenging. And so everything that we're playing is, is considered a project song. But then we're not finishing any of these songs. We're not getting from point A to point B. And then we're looking at ourselves going, well, is there something wrong? Why can't I play? Why am I not good enough? And that's what starts happening mentally when all we're doing are things that fit into the project song category. 
So we need to start trying to find a way of being able to balance that by going, you know what, this isn't all about trying to make everything impossible. It's also about having fun and playing a tune. If I sit down and play a Dawkins song, I love old school Dawkins, and, and it, whether it's easy or hard for me doesn't make any difference. It's fun for me to play. And that doesn't mean I don't look for challenging things as well, because I do, but I gotta have a balance of these things. So your balance on a daily practice, okay, should be you've got three songs that you're formulating over here in the ego category that are just fun. They're nice warm-ups, you're having fun, you can play for people, you can jam with people, whatever that might be. And then you've got this one song over here that's your project. It's the one thing that you're really trying to tackle. And if it doesn't work out, don't, don't get down on yourself. You throw it out, you try something else. Stick something else in that project song category and see what you can do. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in your practice. Remember, always stay positive and do the best that you can and stop trying to compare yourself to the rest of the world because it's a non-winning game anyway and why would you do it? Have fun with what you're doing and, uh, and then just keep getting better on, on the, the terms that make sense to you and have some fun with these songs. So take care, practice hard, and I'll speak to you soon.